it's time to get another mining rig online. We're gonna get to this in just a little bit, but first I wanna give you an update on my solo mining journey of Neoxa. So to catch you up, in case you haven't been paying attention, this is the last video I made on solo mining, and what I've been doing is taking a bunch of GPUs and putting them on Kapow and solo mining Neoxa so I can reach the collateral that I need, which is one million to run a Neoxa node, which will then generate me more income. So. I really love that idea and I really love solo mining and so that is what I started to do. And when I made this video a little while ago, I wasn't doing too great. My luck factor, my effort was 123%, which means I was getting less in the oxa than if I just mined to a classic pool with a bunch of other miners and shared the rewards proportionally. And at the time, I was at 1.56% of the way to getting to that node of 1 million. So I had quite a bit of work to do ahead of me and I did some exploration on maybe some other pools that I could use with a lower ping time and some other ways to take the Neoxia I have and generate more Neoxia. And so what I'm happy to report and I'm very proud of is my solo effort now and how much Neoxia I've generated. So I am 90% solo efforts in starting this experiment which means I am getting more Neoxia doing solo mining than if I just mine to a pool and shared the reward with all the other miners. I'm also 29.16% of the way to a node, which is much further than I was before. So I'm also really stoked on that. The other thing that I've done is I've incorporated a little extra help to take the Neoxa that I currently have and have it generate more Neoxa. And I've done that with the iNodes platform. So here's how this works. They will take the Neoxa that you currently have and they will pool it with other users who send them Neoxa to get to that one million. So they will run the node and then they will split the reward with you proportionally to how much Neoxa you've given. So you can see the amount that I've currently given to iNodes and you can also see what I'm currently estimated to get daily, which is 315.91 Neoxa. That is going to compound and join the Neoxa that they already have and then the Neoxa mining is going to be sent there and everything is just going to continue to accumulate and the Neoxa that I have is putting in work and then I'm solo mining and I'm doing really well right now and it's all getting put into that pool until I get to that one million. A couple things about inodes because that sounds really great. Of course, they're going to take a fee because they are providing a service to you. You can see that fee right there, 7.95% is what they're going to take. And also the big thing to know is like they take your Neoxa, like they have it. You're sending it to a wallet that they own. So you're trusting that they're going to send it back to you when you want it. They've been around for a little while now, really highly regarded and trusted in the community. Uh, and so I feel safe, but like anything in crypto, don't give them more than you can afford to lose. But it's been working out really well for me. And the mining pool that I've uh, started to use is minerpool.pro. And actually, we got to stop here because it looks like I just hit a block because my personal work is in that green there at 4.62%. So I'm curious if I did, I must have, yep, there it is. Just hit that block. Let's go find it over on their website. Yep, and there it is. That's my worker, uh, Fox, that hit that block with 31.8% work, which was very, very lucky, continuing my extreme luck so far in solo mining. So minerpool.pro is what I decided to use because using the stratum ping tool, which I showcased in my last video, showed that the ping time was very, very low. And so that is gonna be really beneficial for the shares that I'm sending over to the pool from my workers. So that's where I'm at so far. I guess the last thing I wanted to check is how much that is worth in USD right now. So let's just say I have uh, 291, 600. So if I go over to CoinGecko here, with the current price of Niazza, they have a tool that I can just convert that right over. So 291,600, currently, well, $955 in USD in Niazza. So I am very stoked on that and how that's going, and I'm gonna continue. I like it so much, I'm gonna add another rig to it. And what I've decided to do is take some AMD cards that I have sitting around collecting dust and get them back to work because I really enjoy these 6600 XTs that I currently have on Kapow that do very well 
They're very efficient, they run very cool, and I got quite a bit of them on Neoxa right now. And so what I found is that I have exactly 12 6600s that will fit exactly perfectly in this 12 GPU mining rig. This server case was provided from my shop a little while ago. It's put in a lot of work. There's a lot of cars that made its way in here to mine Ethereum. It's quite dirty, it's, it's rusty, it's in rough shape. I hope it works. I'm gonna spend some time cleaning this up and then we're gonna go through getting the 6600s in here. Couple things I'm thinking, number one, the fans are currently on the outside of the case so I could fit some long GPUs in here. I'm gonna get those back inside the case and I'm also thinking about airflow. There's two ways you can do fan setups in server cases. You can have the fans pull air out, just get the hot air out of the case instantly, or you can set them up to pull air into the case and go through the GPUs. So I have some server cases doing one way, some server cases doing another way, it just depends on the GPUs that are in there. And I've done a video on this and I've tested it to see if there's one way that's ultimately better than the other and you can check that out. I'll link it up in the card above. So I'm gonna get to work getting this cleaned up, getting the power supply back in here, and then we'll get some GPUs slotted in. Indiana, watch out, watch out. Do not knock my GPUs over. It's over there, I'm almost done. I gotta clean this, relax. All right. All right. Stop. Fans have flipped around, that's such a pain. I really don't like doing that. Hopefully I don't have to ever do that again. So as I continue to get these hooked up, these are just Molex fans. Um, a couple of things that I notice in here, and just the case is so <laughs> rusted. Uh, all the aluminum, I guess just from being out in the garage and um, humidity up in there. I gotta get a dehumidifier going in there. I also, uh, there's some salt air by where I live, so I think that has had some oxidation occur on the, I see it on the housing on the power supply as well, though. From what I remember when I dismantled this case and took the 3070 Ti's out, everything should work. So I'm fingers crossed that that is still the case. So let me look for the Molex coming off of this power supply, which also is absolutely going to be overkill for this build because this is a 2500 watt power supply, which I'm putting very low power cards in there. And so I don't anticipate I'll be taking even close to that. Here's the the Molex uh, connector for this. So we'll get these fans connected just like this. And those are set to pull air out of the case. I double checked. This is not really seating well. One of the fan pins just got bent. I was able to, to fix it. So those are all um, hooked up and everything's looking pretty good now. So it's ready to get some GPUs in it. I have quite an assortment of 6600s. Those are the Power Color Hellhounds, which I really enjoy, and these are a single A pin, which I think all of these should be single A pin, which is gonna make wiring this up a breeze. So uh, let's see, I'm just gonna start slotting them in down on this end. Sometimes things don't go as planned. This motherboard cannot fit these 12 GPUs because the slots are too close to each other. Even with these small 6600s, it just doesn't fit. I can only get six of them in here, which feels like a waste. Even the smaller cards, like this Power Color 6600, the way it's designed, it has on the back of the GPU, see those screws? They hang out past the PCB so significantly that they would be in the fans of the GPU next to it. So I cannot even get these in. So this must just be an older style motherboard designed for a day when there were smaller cards. And I don't know what else I could do to get 12 cards in here. So I think I have to settle on six, which is really disappointing, especially considering this is a 2,500 watt power supply in this. And these cards aren't gonna give me that much hash rate. And so I'm just sad about it. Well, monumental disappointment aside, let's see if this thing works. Took a second there. There she is, recognizing HiveOS, all six GPUs. And so I gotta get the flight sheet set and get some overclocks going on this. So I think I'm gonna do the overclocks first. And I tested the 6600 pretty good on Kapow, though I still have some tweaks to make. So I'm gonna put in some of those overclocks, which is gonna be 1230 uh, for the core clock, core voltage. Uh, I'm gonna just start at 700, because every GPU is gonna be different. And I did not test these exact GPUs. 
Memory, I'm pretty sure, is gonna be good at 950 for the 6600s. And then memory controller, I'm gonna do 700. To start, oop, wrong one, 700. And then what did I do for memory voltage? I'm gonna do 1060, let's just do 1100 to start. Give myself a little wiggle room for these GPUs. I'm gonna save that for all of these cards. Come over to my flight sheet here. And I'm gonna get this uh, up in mining on Eoxy using Team Red Miner. So let's do that. We're gonna open this in the shell so I can take a look at the miner in action. And this rig has not been online, it said in 493 days. Been quite a while since this guy was back online. So up in mining, I definitely have some updates to HiveOS to do and some drivers, I'm sure, but I'm getting what I expect, which is around 14.5 mega hash for these GPUs. Let's refresh HiveOS and see that also reflected here. And it's very, very low power. These GPUs are probably doing realistically around 70 watts each because you gotta remember that they pull a little bit more at the wall because AMD does not accurately report in the software. But that's it. Little bit of a disappointing video to make and not realize these cars were not gonna fit. So I gotta decide what I wanna do here. At least six of them are back online and mining right now, though I'd love to get the other six up and going. Let me know what you think I should do. Should I look at getting my Octo Miner with these cards in it, which again feels like overkill, or should I take these and put them in one of my currently empty open air frames, or maybe build a new frame to get all 12 of these cards going? Let me know down in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like button if you did, sub to the channel, take care of yourself, each other. See you in the next one.